Welcome back, explorers. Happy to have you on the channel. I hope you have been fine enjoying the journey with some of these different activities and things that we've shared here. Uh, always happy to connect with you guys. Today's topic is finding that joy in the class discussions, trying to create rich classroom discussions. I picked up some new techniques on doing that, and I want to share them. So, I'm so excited to share them here in this vlog. So I guess, without further ado, let's dive in. just coming off of going to ASCD, I learned so many things at ASCD, met so many cool people, and there, there's a colleague I work with here, Chuck Taft, he always talks about if you come back from a conference, if, if from a conference you can pull out sort of one idea, one gem, it's, it, makes, it makes the conference. And I had so many pearls at ASCD, but if, if there's one that I'm going to concentrate and want to share with you guys, it's this on making great classroom discussions. I went to this session by Alexis Wiggins, and she wrote a book called The Best Class You Never Taught, and it's about turning students into le learning leaders through these spiderweb conversations, and it's so cool. She walks us through kind of the reasoning, the pedagogy of it, and like, like so many things, I get back and oof, I could have shelved that idea. I could have put it on there and said, I'll do that sometime in the future. I'll do that next year. I'll, I'll read her book and do it this summer. But then, then I thought to myself, like as a presenter, I tell you guys all the time, put this stuff into action. Put it into action. Use it. And so I, I challenged myself this week. I wanted to do a spider web conversation. So I told the students, we're trying something new. And I think this is important. We need to sometimes let our students know we're trying something new. It puts my anxiety lower and it puts their anxiety at a, low, at a lower level. It also puts their curiosity at a higher level. And I think it produces better results in them. I think they try a little harder. They're a little more gentle and nice. So I let them know we're trying something new. I put my chairs and desks and whatnot into sort of this uh, square shape, had all the chairs on the outside so everyone's looking at each other. And I said, we're going to have a discussion, but this discussion is going to be different. It's going to be a whole class discussion. No one has to raise their hands, no one has to do anything. But what we're trying to aim at is we're trying to focus on the integrity of the conversation itself. If the conversation was a person, are you being nice to the conversation? Are you helping the conversation out? So. I put into motion that they could use their notes. They had read section one, section two, section three of my text on Rome. And they had some notes. I said, you could have the notes out in front of you. The prompt I gave them was, what makes Rome great? And I told them I was gonna be off to the side and not really get involved at all. And it so worked. At first, there was this awkward sort of pause. No one knew how to start. No one knew who should start. And ooh, like as a teacher, I just had to button my lip and let that awkward moment happen. And eventually some class leader stepped up and tossed out why they felt Rome was great. Uh, whether it be for architecture or military or religious or cultural or geographical reasons. And they put it out there. They said like, I, I think they're great because of some of the great works they built and developed in their, in their country, in their civilization. And they, and they gave facts which I loved as a history teacher, right? They talked specifically about like the Colosseum or the road network or the aqueducts, right? And then everyone is just hyper-focusing and listening. It's student to student, peer to peer, right? I, in some respects, was nowhere to be found. I was off to the side documenting the flow of the conversation. And this, this is where the name Spiderweb Conversations come from. Uh, the goal that I set for my students was they had to try to reach seven minutes of a rich classroom discussion. And I said, if, if you're going strong, I won't end you. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. But I wanted to set a bar, because uh, Alexis said, you know, you gotta get kids used to this. And I, I have given their kids zero training on this, but I, I gave them trust. I trusted that they could do this. And they did, they, they, they did so well. In fact, most classes got around the 20 minute mark. Uh, where they had rich classroom discussion filled with facts. And what I'm doing, hence the name Spiderweb Conversation, is I'm documenting it on something like this. 
All right, that, that, this is the spiderweb documentation. And what we have here is, uh, everybody's names are on the outside and I just start my pen where the first person talks. And I loop it to the next person that talks and I loop it to the next person and I loop it back to the next person when they start talking. And then you have some codes that you use. Now Alexis, Alexis gave me lots of codes that you could use, like 50, 60 codes. That was too much for me to start with. So when I built this sort of template, I made a set of like six or seven codes. You can, you, you know, by all means, if you do this, make your own. Uh, I will, by the way, include this template in the description below. So, you know, nab that and use it in your classroom. Uh, but those codes, what you're putting there is I'm putting something like facts or interruption or uh, another one for organization and for a leadership, like if they help the conversation get back on track or whatever. Um, and at the, end of the, at the end of the conversation, you have so much like data. And what I did was I, after it was over, I asked them, how, did they like the activity? And oh my gosh, did all the kids say they loved the activity and they wanna do it again. And when can we do it again? They thought it was rich. They felt like it was empowering. They talked about how they felt such a, such a sense of belonging and, and connectedness to each other. They talked about respecting the conversation as if it was a person, the integrity of that conversation, right? They, they listened to each other. They added on to each other. They, they reciprocated kindness both to the conversation itself as well as the people in the room. Then I showed them this. I put this up on my document camera and I said, what do you guys notice here? This is what I was doing. I was just documenting the flow. I talked about like no judgment on this. Just because you have more lines doesn't mean you did better. Just because you have less lines doesn't mean you did worse. Uh, this is just the flow of conversation. And students, students right away were able to sort of dissect this and break it down and it was so awesome. You know, uh, they clearly see that some had these like, <laughs> meeting points of a lot of conversations went to one or two or maybe three people in a class and others had less. Um, then we started to look at some of the coding and they said, well, like this person didn't speak it very much, but when they did, they were, they were rich, they were solid. They really added to the discussion. They pushed the discussion along. So students really started to see the, the value that everyone brought to this conversation. And I gotta tell you as a teacher, I didn't see anybody off task. Everybody was engaged, even the kids that never ended up speaking. And I think in each class there was at least one, maybe two that didn't speak. But I, I'm watching and they were on, on point for this. They were, their head was like a ping pong ball, listening to whoever was talking. And each spider web is different. Uh, and you'll see the, the concentration is different, where the, the points go, the coding is different. Uh, and we talked about that over time, if we were to do it again, do we think this would change? And they, they really spoke to, yes, some of the ones that talked a lot felt like they had to, like they filled in some sort of gap for the group. Others said that uh, other people would become more comfortable to share. Um, some of the kids who are more naturally shy, I still was amazed on the sheet, they still added to the conversation. And when I talk about add to the conversation, they added facts, rich details. I teach 11 and 12 year olds. Facts is not usually what they wanna like bring to the forefront in a discussion. I was blown away. I want you to try these spiderweb conversations. Give it a shot, whether you're doing an English book, a science book, social studies book. I think it really doesn't matter. Have, give them some sort of prompt, let them use their notes and stand aside. Let the conversation happen. And I think you'll be amazed. And I can't wait to hear how Spiderweb's conversations make it into your class. Uh, give Alexis Wiggins a shout out on Twitter. She did a great job with this book, great job with this concept. And I can't wait to hear how you guys are all using it. Till next time, I'm Michael Matera. Consider subscribing, you know, if you could. Sort of smash that subscription button uh, so that you don't miss anything. Ding that bell so you get notifications. And as always, I would love to hear a comment below about how you're either going to use these conversations, these spiderweb conversations, how you've already used it, or any tips and tricks you have, or just pass along a high five. I'd love to hear from you guys. You're the best. Take care.